Chapter 8. Apostasy within the church. One of the early parables of Jesus was the parable of the sower. He explained that it pertained to the gospel message being sent into the world, many accepting it, and then abandoning it for a variety of reasons, the main ones being 1. Lack of understanding it, 2. Tribulation, 3. Persecution, 4. Cares of the world, and 5. Riches. These are some of the most frequent reasons for apostasy in all ages of time. Jesus said there would be a straight and narrow path to the gospel, and only a few would find and follow it. In less than a century the gospel of Christ suffered persecution from without and from apostates within. The Apostle Paul warned them of heresies and apostates that were already at work destroying the Church of Christ. Today, the Latter-day Saints are not exempt from the trials caused by apostates, persecution, and even wealth. It has cost the Church dearly, but there still remain a few valiant and uncompromising elders who will be those chosen by the Lord. Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, Heber C. Kimball, and many others have warned us of the deceptions and false doctrines that would creep into the membership of the Church, as well as influences of the world upon the Mormon people. These were predominantly the most harmful effects of apostasy in the beginning of the Church, and they are still evident today. Old Testament. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. Isa. 3.12. Moreover the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their calls, and their round tires like the moon, the chains, and the bracelets, and the mufflers, the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the tablets, and the earrings, the rings, and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles, and the wimples, and the crisping pins, the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hoods, and the veils. And it shall come to pass, that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink dot dot dot, Isa. 316-24, see Isaiah chapters 3-5. Old Testament. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Dot star therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that well therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. Isaiah 24-5-6. Apostle Joseph Fielding Smith declared that it is the L.D. saints who backquote H.A.V. transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant day. News, Church Section, October 17, 1936. Old Testament. Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which is a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with a hand. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, shall be trodden under feet. In that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory, and for a diadem of beauty, unto the residue of his people, and for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment, and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. But they also have erred through wine, and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink, they are swallowed up of wine, they are out of the way through strong drink, they err in vision, they stumble in judgment. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? The men are weaned from the milk, and drawn from the breasts. Isaiah 28 2-3, 5-9. Tyndale's The Illustrated Bible Dictionary, 31648, states that wine and strong drink may also represent the intoxicating influence of Babylonian supremacy which brings ruin. Book of Mormon. Yea, they have all, the churches, gone out of the way, they have become corrupted. Because of the pride, and because of false teachers, and false doctrine, their churches have become corrupted, and their churches are lifted up, because of pride they are puffed up. They rob the poor because of their fine sanctuaries, they rob the poor because of their fine clothing, and they persecute the meek and the poor in heart, because in their pride they are puffed up. They wear stiff necks and high heads, yea, and because of pride and wickedness and abominations and whoredoms, they have all gone astray save that be a few, who are the humble followers of Christ, nevertheless, they are led, that in many instances they do err because they are taught by the precepts of men. For behold, at that day shall he, the devil, rage in the hearts of the children of men, and stir them up to anger against that which is good and others will he pacify, and lull them away into carnal security, that they will say, All is well in Zion, yea, Zion prospereth, all is well and thus the devil cheateth their souls, and letteth them away carefully down to hell. Therefore, woe be unto him that is at ease in Zion. Woe be unto him that creeth. All is well. Yea, woe be unto him that hearkeneth unto the precepts of men, and denieth the power of God, and the gift of the Holy Ghost. 2, Nephi 28 11-14, 20-21, Book of Mormon. Behold, the Lord hath shown unto me, Moroni, great and marvellous things concerning that which must surely come, at that day when these things shall come forth among you. Behold, I speak unto you as if ye were present, and yet ye are not. But behold, Jesus Christ hath shown you unto me, and I know your doing.
and I know that ye do walk in the pride of your hearts, and there are none save a few only who do not lift themselves up in the pride of their hearts, unto the wearing of very fine apparel, unto envying, and strifes, and malice, and persecutions, and all manner of iniquities, and your churches, yea, even every one, have become polluted because of the pride of your hearts. For behold, ye do love money, and your substance, and your fine apparel, and the adorning of your churches, more than ye love the poor and the needy, the sick and the afflicted. O ye pollutions, ye hypocrites, ye teachers, who sell yourselves for that which will canker, why have ye polluted the holy church of God? Why are ye ashamed to take upon you the name of Christ? Why do ye not think that greater is the value of an endless happiness than that misery which never dies because of the praise of the world? Mormon 8 34-38 Note in a visit with Joseph Fielding Smith, a personal friend of the author, inferred that this quotation in Isaiah could only apply to the Latter-day Saints. Elder Smith responded by saying, If the half fits, we better word. Joseph Smith. As reported by Messiah Hancock. Dot 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 you will travel west until you come to the valley of the Great Salt Lake. You will live to see men arise in power in the church who will seek to put down your friends and the friends of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Many will be hoisted because of their money and the worldly learning which they seem to be in possession of, and many who are the true followers of our Lord and Savior will be cast down because of their poverty. Messiah Hancock Journal, page 19. Brigham Young. I have but one fear concerning the people in the valleys of the mountains. I have but one trembling sensation in the nerves of my spirit, and that is, lest we do not live the religion we profess. If we lowly practice what we profess, I will tell you we are at the defiance of all hell. But if we transgress the law God has given us, and trample his blessings, mercies and ordinances under our feet, and treat them with the indifference which I have thought that some do occasionally, not fully realizing the obligations that they are under to their God, El have feared that in consequence they would be overcome, and that the Lord would let them be scattered and smitten. JD 2 186. Brigham Young. There never has been a day for ages and ages, not since the true church was destroyed after the days of the apostles, that required the faith and the energy of godly men and godly women, and the skill, wisdom and power of the Almighty to be with them, as much as this people required at the present time. There never was that necessity, there never has been a time on the face of the earth, from the time that the church went to destruction, and the priesthood was taken from the earth, that the powers of darkness and the powers of earth and hell were so embittered, and enraged, and incensed against God and godliness on the earth, as they are at the present. And when the spirit of persecution, the spirit of hatred, of wrath, and malice ceases in the world against this people, it will be the time that this people have apostatized and joined hands with the wicked, and never until then, which I pray may never come. J.D. 4 326-327 Brigham Young I have had visions and revelations instructing me how to organize this people, so that they can live like the family of heaven, but, I cannot do it while so much selfishness and wickedness reign in the elders of Israel. There are many great and glorious privileges for the people, which they are not prepared to receive. How long it will be before they are prepared to enjoy the blessings God has in store for them, I know not it has not been revealed to me. I know the Lord wants to pour blessings upon this people, but were he to do so in their present ignorance, they would not know what to do with them. They can receive only a very little, and that must be administered to them with great care. JD 9 269. Brigham Young. I sometimes think that I would be willing to give anything, to do almost anything in reason, to see one fully organized branch of this kingdom one fully organized ward. Is there even in this territory a fully organized ward? Not one. It may be asked, why do you not fully organize the church? Because the people are incapable of being organized. I could organize a large ward who would be subject to a full organization, by selecting families from the different wards, but at present such a branch of the church is not in existence. JD 1020. Brigham Young. Dot 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 cease to give the wealth which the Lord has given us to those who would destroy the kingdom of God, and scatter us to the four winds, if they had the power. Cease to buy from them the jugas and frivolous things they bring here to sell to us for our money and means means, that we should have to bring the poor here, to build our temples, our towers, ornament our public grounds and buildings, and to beautify our cities. For, as merchandising has been generally conducted here, instead of having our means to perform these public works, it has been borne away by our enemies by the million. I know it is our duty to save ourselves. The enemy of all righteousness will do nothing to help us in that work, neither will his children. We have to preserve ourselves, for our enemies are determined to destroy us. I know it is the duty of this people to build up themselves, for our enemies will not build us up, but they will do their uttermost to tear us down. JD 11 139. Brigham Young. Civilization. It is corruption and wickedness of the deepest dye. It is no society for you, my people, come out of her. Gather out where you can pray, where you can have meetings and sacraments, where you can meet, associate, and mingle together, where you can beautify the earth and gather around you the necessaries of life, and make everything as beautiful as iron. 
and begin to establish Zion on the earth. Sanctify yourselves, sanctify your houses, the lands that you live upon, your farms, the streams of water that flow through your cities, country places and farms. Sanctify your hills and mountains and valleys, and the land around about, and begin to build up Zion. Now, come out of her, my people for this purpose, and partake not of her sins, lest you receive of her plagues. After all these revelations and commandments the people who profess to be saints will mingle with the wicked and foster those who would cut their throats and feed and clothe and give them everything they can gather together. J.D. 11 300, February 1867. Brigham Young. It is true this is I in North and South America is I in, and the land where the Lord commenced his work and where he commenced he will finish. This is the land of Zion, but we are not yet prepared to go and establish the center stake of Zion. The Lord tried this in the first place. He called the people together to the place where the new Jerusalem and the great temple will be built, and where he will prepare for the city of Enoch. And he gave revelation after revelation, but the people could not abide them, and the church was scattered and peeled, and the people hunted from place to place till, finally, they were driven into the mountains, and here we are. Now, it is for you and me to prepare to return back again, not to our fatherland, in many cases, but to return east, and by and by to build up the center stake of Zion. We are not prepared to do this now, but we are here to learn until we are of one heart and of one mind in the things of this life. Do all the Latter-day Saints arrive at this? No, they have not, our former experience has proved this. Of the great many who have been baptized into this church, but few have been able to abide the word of the Lord, they have fallen out on the right and on the left, and have foundered by the way, and a few have gathered together. Will these be prepared to enter the celestial kingdom? Some of them will be, and will become kings and priests, but not all of these, only a portion of them. They do not know what to do with the revelations, commandments and blessings of God. J.D. 11 324 Brigham Young You recollect reading in the revelations of John what the angel said to John, when he was on the Isle of Patmos, about the seven churches. What was the matter with those churches? They were not living according to the light that had been exhibited. Do the Latter-day Saints live according to the light that has been exhibited to them? No, they do not. J.D. 1266 Brigham Young and with regard to the conduct of this people if an angel should come here and speak his feelings as plainly as I do, I think he would say, Zero, Latter-day Saints. Why don't you see, why don't you open your eyes and behold the great work resting upon you, and that you have entered into? You are blind, you are stupid, you are in the dark, in the mist and fog, wandering to and fro like a boat upon the water without sail, rudder or oar, and you know not whither you are going. J.D. 1993-94, August 19, 1877. Brigham Young. As reported by Messiah Hancock. He, B.Y., conversed freely on the situation of the saints in the mountains, and said that he dreaded the time when the saints would become popular with the world, for he had seen in sorrow, in a dream, or in dreams, this people clothed in the fashions of Babylon and drinking in the spirit of Babylon, until one could hardly tell a saint from a black leg. And he felt like shouting, to your tents, O Israel, because it was the only thing that could keep this people pure. Many of this people for the sake of riches and popularity, will sell themselves for that which will canker their souls and lead them down to misery and despair. It would be better for them to dwell in wigwams and among the Indians, than to dwell with the Gentiles and miss the glories which God wishes them to obtain. Lie Story of Messiah Hancock, page 73. Brigham Young. Hear it, ye elders of Israel, and mark it down in your logbooks. The fullness of the gospel is the united order and the order of plural marriage, and without these two principles this gospel never can be full. And I much fear that when I am gone this people will give up these two principles which we prize so highly, and if they do this church cannot advance as God wishes it to advance. This course delivered at dedication of St. George Temple, and recorded in the pamphlet Celestial Marriage, Pub. By Shepherd Book Company. Heber C. Kimball. I have not one word of reflection to make against you, yet you are living at a poor dying rate. J.D. 12190, 1868. Heber C. Kimball. After a while the Gentiles will gather to this place by the thousands, and Salt Lake will be classified among the wicked cities of the world. A spirit of speculation and extravagance will take possession of the saints, and the result will be financial bondage. Persecution comes next, and all true Latter-day Saints will be tested to the limit. Many will apostatize, and others will stand still, not knowing what to do. Darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the minds of the people. Amanda Wilcox Records, BYU. Heber C. Kimball. Yes, said Brother Heber, by which name he was so familiarly known, we think we are secure here in the chambers of the everlasting hills, where we can close those few doors of the canyons against mobs and persecutors, the wicked and the vile, who have always beset us with violence and robbery, but I want to say to you, my brethren, the time is coming when we will be mixed up in these now peaceful valleys to that extent, that it will be difficult to tell the face of a saint, from the face of an enemy to the people of God. Then, brethren, look out for the gray sieve, for there will be a great sifting time, and many will fall. For I say unto you there is a test, a test, a test coming, and who will be able to stand? 
his HCK public discourses about this time were the most earnest and impressive that I had ever heard, and on several occasions in the Provo Meeting House, he clearly foreshadowed the time of trial the saints are now passing through, and to a period still before us. He often used the language, a test, a test, is coming. Life of Heber C. Kimball, O.F. Whitney, pages 445, 447. Orson Hyde, 1846 Revelation. The evil men, ambitious of power, must needs arise among you, and they shall be led by their own self-will, and not by me. Yet they are instruments in my hands, and are permitted to try my people, and to collect from among them those who are not the elect, and such as are unworthy of eternal life. Grieve not after them, neither mourn nor be alarmed. My people know my voice and also the voice of my spirit, and a stranger they will not follow, therefore such as follow strangers are not my people. Unpublished Revelations, com. By Fred Collier, pages 104-105. to John Taylor. We are getting into such a condition that if we were to meet the Lord, we could not look him in the face, and the way we are going, it will soon be impossible to tell what we do believe. Day. News, March 9, 1889. John Taylor. We did not come here to copy after anything that exists in the world, we had no such idea or intention, and if this fact is not understood by all the Latter-day Saints, it ought to be. When men come among us, we should be very sorry indeed if they found us like the world, we are not like them, neither do we wish to be. We do not, today, try to imitate any of the governments of the earth, we do not admire their policy, we do not believe that their systems are correct. We believe that they have the seeds of dissolution within themselves, and through the lack of correct principles by which to regulate themselves, that they will eventually crumble to pieces. J.D. 11 340. John Taylor. As reported by Edward Lund. He, J.T., saw Salt Lake City become a great and beautiful city with cement streets and roads, and the people had become wealthy. Great beautiful homes covered the city, and he said that the city was extended almost to the point of the mountain, south of the now, 1951, state prison. The people had become indifferent to the counsel and advice of the authorities of the church and were more interested in the accumulating of wealth than they were in living their religion, and at this time there began to be war and bloodshed. Visions of the Latter Days, Pioneer Press, pages 99 to 100. Orson Pratt. But you know that property is the Gentiles' God, it is sought after more eagerly than any other thing by the Gentile nations, it is worshipped by them, and their hearts are set on their treasures, and their treasures are of the earth and of an earthly nature, and it will take a long time for the saints to get rid of their old idols their idolatrous notions and traditions. The Gentile God has great influence even over the saints, consequently it will take years to eradicate covetousness from our hearts, as our president has told us that the law relating to a full consecration of our property would perhaps be one of the last laws that would be fulfilled before the coming of Christ. Much patience and forbearance will need to be exercised before the saints will get completely rid of their old traditions, Gentile notions, and whims about property, so as to come to that perfect law required of them in the revelations of Jesus Christ. But the day will come when there will be no poor in Zion, but the Lord will make them equal in earthly things, that they may be equal in heavenly things, that is, according to his notions of equality, and not according to our narrow, contracted views of the same. J.D. 2261. Orson Pratt. When we go back to Jackson County, we are to go back with power. You suppose that God will reveal his power among an unsanctified people, who have no regard nor respect for his laws and institutions, but who are filled with covetousness? No. When God shows forth his power among the Latter-day Saints, it will be because there is a union of feeling in regard to doctrine, and in regard to everything that God has placed in their hands, and not only a union but a sanctification on their part, that there shall not be a spot or wrinkle as it were, but everything shall be as fair as the sun that shines in the heavens. In order to bring about this, who knows how many chastisements God may yet have to pour out upon the people calling themselves Latter-day Saints. J.D. 15361. George Q. Cannon. But if we had our way, as Latter-day Saints, there would be no drinking saloons, there would be no houses of ill fame, there would be no gambling saloons, there would be nothing of this character permitted in our cities or in our settlements. We would not only be free from litigation and strife, as I have said we are as a people, but we would be free from those other evils, those other vices. J.D. 24-134. George Q. Cannon. It is not the numbers of the Latter-day Saints that gives them weight in the world, so much as it is their union and their distinctive virtues, which in the struggle for existence and supremacy, always give victory and triumph to their possessors. If the Latter-day Saints desert the principles of the gospel, and abandon themselves to the vices and corruptions that prevail in the world, and to which they would have been subjected had they remained in a scattered condition, they would have no more power than any other people of like number. But that which will ever give them superiority, so long as they possess them, are those virtues which their religion makes imperative upon them, and without which they cannot remain the people of God. There can be no question about the future destiny of what are called the Mormon people, if they will only be true to themselves. Mill. Star 6350. Joseph Fielding Smith. I wish we all loved the gospel to the extent that we would be willing to do anything the Lord asks of us, irrespective of what the world thinks or does. 
Why cannot the Latter-day Saints uphold the standards and the regulations of the Church with united effort, notwithstanding what the world might do or think? With some of us it is the custom to do very much as the world does. We dress as the world does. We seek its pleasures, we follow its customs, and there is no question in my mind that these things do bring us somewhat in conflict with the things the Lord has taught and commanded us to do. Doctrines of Salvation, pages 294 to 295. Joseph Fielding Smith. When I see reports of conditions in the state and surrounding states where Latter-day Saints dwell, the amount of liquor that is consumed, and tobacco that is consumed, and tea and coffee and other things destructive of health, and contrary to the commandments of the Lord. When I see the people violating the Sabbath day and committing all other kinds of sins, contrary to that which they have been taught, I wonder if the Lord is pleased with us. Doctrines of Salvation, page 329.